Interviu dupla trei. Twelve years ago, I lived in the city in a nice apartment. At the time, I owned a Shih dog, and I was living a beautiful love story with my boyfriend, who is today my husband. We were very happy and uh, never imagined living a life as a Rottweiler breeder. Twelve years ago, we come to the village just for the summer because I work a lot and I want to relax at home near a big forest in the middle of nature. But uh, someone stole our Shih Tzu dog and because my, me and my wife uh, both uh, love uh, Rottweilers, we decided to buy a Rottweiler. Uh, but in a short time we bought uh, two more Rottweilers and from that moment uh, our passion for the breed went to the next level, the shows. My first, my first show, I finished in the second place with my female back Excalibur Jasmine in the junior class uh, when she was just nine months old. It was a lot of competition with uh, nine female in the class. I was happy with the result because, because uh, it was first show, but in the same time I was motivated uh, to work more and be the first place in the next show. I was looking through the internet one day. Um, I'm not sure if it was Facebook or another site. It, it could have been a puppy for sale site. But I ran across a puppy that was bred uh, and the side was Rex Tibetor. But the price didn't match you know, what I had been quoted previously from different kennels as well as uh, the Tibetor kennel itself. After talking with Simona, um, I felt confident that these these were good people. Um, she held nothing back. Um, every question that I asked, she could answer. There's no hesitation. Uh, she was willing to show photos, videos. Um, I found out that they microchip their puppets, so um, one concern with you know ordering one puppy and getting another one. So I was pretty confident with that. Uh, Mr. Sean contacted us and he became our first customer from USA. All the other puppies from that litter went out of Romania. Uh, three pups uh, went to Brazil, one in France, one in Austria, one in United Kingdom and one in Trinidad Tobago where uh, we made the first uh, dog export from Romania from all breeder in Trinidad. I remember the evening that I went to Western Union, the manager there, um, he was a high school classmate with one of my, with my oldest son. And so he knew me. So he, he suggested that I didn't send the money because people had, you know, been getting scammed um, out of their money trying to purchase puppies. And, you know, since he knew my son and he sort of knew me, he encouraged me not to send the money. So I kind of hesitated. Uh, I remember leaving and then returning back, you know, and, and he asked me a question. You know, have you ever purchased from these people before? And I answered no. And I can remember um, him kind of looking down at the ground and kind of tilting his head a little bit. He didn't say anything. but. You know, that let me know that, you know, he wasn't okay with it, but he accepted my money. He sent it, and uh, I remember walking from the counter. He had a concerned look for me um, as I exited the door. I got home. Uh, well, before I got home, on the way home, uh, I started to question myself, you know, like, you know, what if this kid, right? You know, what have you done? One of Mr. Shawn's friends is Mr. Vimon. He imported a female from P Litter. Your thought process when he first told you I'm thinking about importing because I remember when um, you know my story's similar when Tim had first told me that he was gonna import a dog I was like oh that's dope you know they seem like they do anything but I ain't doing that that was my first reaction <laughs> you see what I'm saying yeah. so walk me through what was your reaction when when he told you he was gonna you know get into importing and stuff like that so when he first mentioned to me about importing uh, I've never done it never thought about it ne never had a clue about it. Uh, 
and like I say, he he had just imported Nina, and uh, we was talking, and when he mentioned it, you know, I, was, I asked him, I said, well, how does this work? You know, why, how, you know, and he told me, you know, he found the kennel, act before his kennel, and, you know, he did his research on him. Uh, they were just starting off, uh, so it was a it was a learning process there. So they learned together, and then we learned together. I had this import, and I was happy with this import, Nina. And but at the same time, I really wasn't fully aware of what had you know had transpired. Um, I had imported not only you know my first import, but it was actually. Aquaforce first import to the U.S. Um, I can remember registering her, getting the FCI papers, changed over to AKC papers, and I think that's when it kind of set in. You know, wow! I just not only imported a, a nice female, but I imported the first Aquaforce female to the U.S. So. Um, after the first transition went so smooth, uh, I wanted to know what they had coming up next. And they sent me um, pictures of pups where they had um, bred with Ortiz Masterfield. Um, I liked the pups, I liked the bone, I liked the structure. Um, by this time, uh, a friend of mine by the name of Raymond Reed uh, he also wanted to import and I suggested that we import these two females together and he was willing he jumped right in you know so I talked to Sean and you know I kind of excited he was showing me the dolls showing me uh, you know what they had to offer and uh, you know so I was the more I, the more I thought about it, the more excited, the more excited I got about it, you know. And, and I wasn't really too concerned with being scammed since he already uh, had already got one from over there. So uh, he and I just talked a lot about it, and uh, you know, I said, "Hey, I'm ready to do this." You know, Sean never led me astray before. He's always been a straight shooter, and he's always answered any questions I had. And yeah, and that's what developed our relationship now. So because now we 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 we're pretty tight today. And that's been five, six, seven, eight years ago. So we still going strong with our friendship. Uh, he had never he had never imported anything uh, like I did, but just by him knowing me and him being able to see Nina and me telling him telling him about Simona and and Colin and, and, and how smooth a transaction it was, he was willing to, you know, invest some money and, and go in with me and uh, import these two girls together. And at the time, importing two pups together, you know, the shipping was uh, a little bit cheaper, so it worked out great. Um, I imported Albert Force Purser and he imported Albert Force Precious. Um, the same thing happened as uh, Timona said. However, after we got to Atlanta, um, you know, I told him, I said, this is what we have to do. All we have to do is go in, uh, get our paperwork, go to customs, we out of here. Um, we got our paperwork, went to customs. Uh, the guy behind the counter, he looked at the paperwork and returned it to us. And we kind of paused for a minute and looked at each other. And he was looking to me because I had done this before and I had assured him that, you know, it wasn't going to be any trouble. Uh, so the guy behind the counter told us, and he said, hey, y'all need to go get a broker. And at the time, I never used a broker to get puppets because I only had one. So they gave us this long list. We scrolled down and uh, we found Atlanta Custom Broker. So we called them, told them the, the situation, and, and they was uh, real nice and pleasant. Uh, they said, sure, we could help them. So we rode to Atlanta Customs, uh, filled out some paperwork, gave them the documents that we had. Uh, they cleared the puppy, and we was on our way back to Birmingham. That was the beginning of it, you know, going in together, working together, uh, almost like a partnership. 
mm-hmm. you know, every time he decided to do something, he, he'd check with me, hey man, I'm thinking about doing this, you blah, blah, what you think? And I was like, man, I like that, you know, and then I look at it, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, doing that, boom. You know, we run it, everything we do, we run it, we run it through each other. Mm-hmm. You know, we have another buddy named Marcus over in Arkansas. We all run everything with each other. We, you know, we compare notes. We do a lot of studying, do a lot of pedigree studying. Uh, Cause we know, we see what we, we see what they producing over there. We want to produce the same or better. And that's the goal is to try to do better. So, you know, that that's how kind of how our relationship started off, you know, and uh, he's still mentoring me today. What was going through your mind? Uh, the work that I have to put into the dogs we already have was quite a bit. Uh, so I was like, no, that's that, that doesn't work for me. But of course, my husband has a vision and a dream. So I was like, okay, we'll, we'll give this a try. Just a try. <laughs> and at some point, Wayman became more and more secretive about bringing in dogs from overseas, <laughs> from Aquaforce Kennels, of course. And I was like, Mm-mm, no, this is not going to work. <laughs> and, you know, Sean started talking, you know, oh, Judy, just, you know, go along with the program. You'll see, you'll see. And, you know, Michelle was in my ear, you know, you'll, you'll see it. It gets better, you know. And I'm like, no, mm-mm. Not gonna work. Well, I had to say, uh, I wasn't totally being secretive. Yes, he was. Yes, he <laughs> I, I was. may have already put the deposit in before I told her. Well, so. that's being secretive, right? <laughs> okay. So, so, hey, but I would talk to her, and I tell her son, yeah, I mentioned it to her. She ain't really seeming like she on board. Uh, but I keep talking, keep talking, and once she says something, then don't say no. I pulled the trigger. I told him, well, you had to strike while the iron is hot. She didn't say no, so I got to go. And this still <laughs> happens to this day. You know, he comes in and he'll sit down and he thinks I'm over here in conversations. And he'll say, I got a confession to make. And I'm sitting here, I'm going, I, I already know. We get another dog. <laughs> import a mail from Esli Tarakbar for Samson. And after he imported many pups from many litters from our kennel. But Akbar for Samson was a spectacular dog and become very popular in the States. A lot of people ask us a puppy like him. Importing Uncle Ford Samson, um, I have to go back to his sister Sheba. Um, I actually put a deposit uh, on a female. Uh, at the time, I hadn't decided on one. But I knew that they had bred to uh, Lex Von House Edelstein, and uh, I wanted a female. At the same time, uh, my buddy Raymond Reed was looking for a male, and he he told me he said, "Hey, I like this Lex Von House Edelstein." He got act before Sheba. I had that before Samson, and, and we picked up Marcus' dog that before Solo. So we get to the airport, and we open in the crates. We, you know, we trying to pet them, you know, because I, I like to take my dogs. I let them just ride in the truck. Uh, but uh, Samson wasn't here. He wasn't having it. Well, you reach in, he's. So I said, well, I guess he's going to have to stay in the crate till we get to your house. I can remember um, opening up the cage and seeing the mail. Uh, uh, before Samson, as well as uh, uh, before Solo. I had never seen bones on puppies um, that age with the size and the mass. Uh, I can remember that stood out. Uh, the, the big paws, the big bones, the huge heads on, on puppies that was only four months old. And these puppies were I mean, they were striking when, to look at, um, and they was uh, unusual because I, I'd seen a lot of um, different breeds, or a lot of different breeders here in the States, and I knew a lot of different breeders, and to see puppets with this bone and size, I knew that was a difference. Immediately we started taking pictures the first day because, of course, we like to take pictures when they first land and get here so we can send 
uh, Simona pictures back to let her know they landed safely because I know they're going to worry. They always do. They worry until they they see him at home interacting. So that first day we took the pictures, you know, I sent them to Simona, made our first Act Before Samson post, and immediately people was asking, wow, where did you get him from? You know, I'm t I mean immediately. So, you know, I told him, hey, Act Before Samson. Act before his camera, call some more, you know, message some more, message Callan. They're good people, you know. Uh, but early on, we knew Samson was real photogenic. So we was taking pictures almost every day, posting them, to the point where we thought people might even get tired of seeing them, but they kept asking for more. <laughs> so as Samson grew, you know, he, he grew, his personality grew, you know, he. I really can't say enough about that boy. Samson, uh, I mean, he was just—he was just a great dog, you know. He—we he was post, like I said, we was always posting pictures of him, and, uh, and constantly getting millions and millions of hits. You know, people, you know, people just calling, just messaging, where you get him, you know, when you gonna breed him, I, you know, just on and on. So I remember Samson, you know, when he got old enough to breed, you know, uh, I was trying to remember who. Well, actually. Samson's first litter was from Sean. I think he bred Samson to Aquaforce Nina. I want to say, is that right? You might have to check with Sean that I might be wrong. But Sean actually had the first litter off of Samson. And uh, those puppies were beautiful. You know, they came out, they had the dark markings, the big bones, the nice heads. Even when they first born, you could see it in them. You know, so I, I, you know, I always tell people, hey, that boy producing like his daddy. You know, <laughs> I believe he's gonna be all right. You know, and every little and every little after that, he was producing. So as people start seeing him grow, start watching him, you know, they they still watching Samson, but now they're seeing Samson Productions, and uh, he became more and more popular like that. You know, that way because not only was he beautiful and pretty, he's producing beauty and pretty. So yeah, it went on from there. You know, Samson became real popular. You know, with with a lot of people. You know, still real popular. Even though he's no longer with us, he's still real popular. And uh, yeah, I'd have to say he, he, he held his own. So earlier this year, uh, February 19th, I believe to be exact, uh, we lost our boy Samson uh, due to a fight with cancer. Uh, we, we first noticed he started he started eating real light, you know, he, he was losing weight, you know, but he was breathing heavy back then, and, uh, and I was kind of chalking it up to that, but then it got to the point where he was, he was really eating low, you know, and I'm trying everything, I'm talking to the vet every day, you know, we trying to figure this thing out, you know, she, she, she kind of in the beginning thought, you know, it might just been breathing, and I said, yeah, we're gonna have to slow him down, uh, not really thinking, you know, we did all kind of blood work. We did all this stuff. Nothing was coming back, you know, wrong or, or bad or anything. And uh, once we got to our wits end or what could be wrong, you know, my vet said, hey, you know, we're going to have to send him to a specialist. Let him do the let him do the uh, CAT scan and, uh, or with an ultrasound and see if we figure out what's wrong. Uh, so we go, we, we went to the vet that they recommended, the, the hospital, animal hospital. And, uh, Got the boy in there, got him on the table, started doing the, the, the uh, ultrasound. And the doctor started saying, okay, uh, let me just run this through you, you know. It started here, you know, he started showing us the pictures, started showing us the masses. And ended up, my boy had, cancer was eating him all up inside, you know. And, and so all this time, you know, he still, he was still trying to be Samson, you know. I'm still trying to be Wayman. She's still being Judy, trying to figure out what's wrong with this boy. We working every day trying to figure out what's wrong, and he's working every day trying to make us feel better about him feeling bad. So, you know, we, we, we stayed there for each other, you know. Uh, so at the end, you know, we take him to the vet. We, we get this bad news. And uh, he knew, it almost seemed like he knew that it was the bad news. So on the way home, he's sitting in the back seat. The whole ride home, he's, he's putting his head on her shoulder, putting his head on my shoulder, you know, almost like he's trying to comfort us, you know, because that's, that's the way that boy was. And, uh, 
And I thought I was going to be, you know, be able to be strong about it. You know, I knew I had to be strong for her. But uh, I called my vet to try to tell her the news and man, I couldn't even talk. I just, I just hung up in her face. <laughs> and uh, it still hurts today pretty much, you know. It, it, that boy was very special to us. You know, it's very, very special to a lot of people. But he... He was just something. He was just something for us. So I, I remember the next day. You know, I, when I finally did get myself together enough to talk to the vet, I said, "Hey, I can't let my boy suffer." I said, "I'm not going to send him through all this, all this stuff to just still losing." So we need to go ahead and uh, plan to put him down. You know, so that was a very difficult decision. It, it, it was difficult, but it was easy because I knew I couldn't have that boy suffering. So, we set it up for the next day. <laughs> and if I wish I could, if, in hindsight being 2020, I might have just took him straight to the vet then. But it's six o'clock in the evening, you know. But I, I wish I probably should have did it. Because um, I know it was rougher on her the next day because she called me about 50 times all day long. Hey, Samson's playing with the ball. Samson's, he's doing this, he's doing that. I'm like, baby, please don't do that to you. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do it to us. Don't do it to Samson, you know. So, uh, man, it's, it was rough. You know, I, I talked to her. I said, you know, these things happen. So uh, I'm going to need you to get strong because I want you to go to the vet with me, you know. And uh, everybody there, everybody there knew Samson. So here we are in the vet's office. The whole vet office is almost, it, it's almost like they closed it, you know, because everybody was in the room. Uh, the, my, my main vet and, and the guy that, that you know, the, the, the big vet in the office, all the uh, vet techs and nurses, we got a room full of people with, here with Samson, you know. And uh, she t she walked us through the process of what, what was going to happen, how it was going to happen. And, um, and pretty much we... we we stayed there with him and let him lay it, you know, lay his head on, on our shoulders or on our legs and uh, watch, watch my boy go to sleep. I wanted a strong name for my Rottweiler kennel. A friend of mine helped me pick the name. Akbar means the great. And uh, the, the force is reference to Rottweiler power. And uh, I like that. From there, the Akbar force name was born. When my female uh, was ready to give birth, I called my vet to come to assist her to be sure she is in good hands. I was so happy but so nervous. It's amazing to witness new life born. Uh, I watch the babies every minute. So who's who? We got Zoe, Von Dog Life. We have Hero, he's the newest addition to our pack. Import from Serbia. He was actually a keeper pup but he got his tail injured. Um, slammed in a door unfortunately. We have Nova, Von Dog Life. They're actually Littermate sisters. Nice. 
my two females that I first my first purchases. Then we have my boy Mark Bark Force Mancho. Facebook, you know, just checking out the, the Rottweiler groups and, you know, seeing what's out there. And I'm scrolling and I see this video of a male. Um, and, I mean, right off the bat, it was just, he just stood out. I mean, his head was super nice. Um, his coat and body was nice. I mean, he was just, he just really stood out to me. Um, I mean, I, like I said, the, the Rottweiler groups has a lot of dogs, but he just stood out. So, I noticed that she had posted it maybe it said like 18 hours ago. It wasn't even that long, so I immediately reached out to Simona and to see, you know, is, was he still available? Um, she told me he was still available, so I started asking, you know, some more questions about his pedigree. Um, I immediately started researching the dogs in his pedigree, and I mean, I was just blown away. Um, I mean, I couldn't even believe that he was still available. And then, you know, it was so crazy to the point where I asked her, like, man, why do you still have this dog available? And she told me that she was he was a keeper pup. Um, and now that she wanted to go ahead and rehome him. So I think I purchased him the very next day. So he wasn't even on the market for two days before I went ahead and got him. From the moment he landed and I let him out of the crate, man, it was just all love from the, from the jump. Um, he was just happy to be out the crate, honestly. I mean, and then I had a ball in my hand and I seen right then and there, okay, the ball is gonna be my best friend because his eyes lit up when he seen that ball in my hand. Um, I mean, I got him to load up in the car, no problems. He, we traveled back to Dallas because I had to pick him up in Houston, Texas. Um, and the entire trip, it was about a three and a half to four hour trip, it was no problems. And I mean, I knew right then that, you know, he was going to be a great dog. The breeder's life come with uh, many sacrifices. For example, uh, we can't leave for a week to go on vacation. I'm lucky because my wife and I uh, work together and uh, everything uh, become easier. If the partner is not uh, involved in the uh, breeding program, it's very hard to understand the situation. Uh, we always support uh, each other and this is the most helpful for us. Called Big Dog, but that's what I call him, Wayne. You know, and he finally broke it down to me like Apple Force is a kennel. You know, I didn't know about the pedigrees, I didn't know anything about Rockwell, I just knew about a look I wanted, and you know, I, that's, what I, that's what I wanted at the time. And you see that Simone and Colin are yeah. accessible, so yeah. at that point you reach out. Yeah. So, how was that relationship in the beginning when you started reaching out to Colin and Simone? Well, you know, like any other breeder, at first they was, you know, they treat, just treated me like a customer, you know, because they was like, hey man, this is what we got, this is what, you know, and they was pretty much cool, you know, understanding, and actually they was like, they was more so caring about their dogs and where their dogs was going, more important than anything. And so like, I met Simona and I was just like, just asking her question, like, hey, um, what litters you have coming up or, you know, what like basically like what the pedigree is and all of that she was breaking it down to me and what really got me wanted to import is when I finally saw you when you finally got yours off Mac when I think it was Mac and Major you and Tim and when I seen y'all did y'all import thing I, I instantly called Big Dog like man what's going on like 
they got airports going on. Like, what's going on? Cut me in and cut it out. <laughs> you know, that's how, yeah. I, that's how I looked at it. I met Simona because I saw her first letter, her first letter of um, Eminem and Wanda. And it, the letter was so, like, like, so quick. And I was like, damn, I miss my beat again. You know what I'm saying? And so I had met Simona. I'm like, Simona, it was like months later I had messaged her. I said, Simona, who your next female coming in heat? Who's your next, let's come a letter, you know what I'm saying? She was like, um, I'm gonna bring Wanda again to Eminem. And she, you know how Simona is, she, she, she like to keep it on the low, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> and so, And so I'm like, she's like, don't tell anyone. You know, she haven't announced it. She told me she haven't announced it. I'm like, okay, no problem. And I was like, um, she messaged me, like, I said, bro, after I asked about the next upcoming letter, she messaged me a month or two later and was like, I'm about to um, do the breed. And she told me again, I to say nothing. Like she sent me videos, her traveling, go about the breed with Eminem and everything, right? And so as soon as she did the breeding, I instantly sent Simone a deposit on, um, on that letter. And so, as you know, the puppies got birth, um, Wanda gave birth to the puppies, I wanna say, it was hard, like Mike, I even messaged you at the time. Like, man, yeah. Mike, like, Mike, which one should I pick, man? I'm liking this one, what's your opinion? You know, I always come to you for your input on which dog I should pick, bro. Like, it, I always come to you on that. And he was like, man, bro, it's tough. They all, the whole letter is fire, bro. I'm like, I'm like yeah, yeah, you're right about that. And so, as the puppies got of age, you know, they develop a look. I, every picture someone is sending me, I'm sending it to Mike, like, <laughs> like, what should I pick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. I was so excited, bro, because, like, I wanted I wanted him that bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted him. And it was like, I would have been, like, pissed if I didn't get him. Like, Mike, I was messaging, like, every day about this, dog. Indeed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, every day about him. Like, yeah. man, you chopping it up. And so, the guy finally made his pick, and he went with the yellow meal. Jackpot, like, he like, you know what I'm saying? Like, th that's my boy. And so I instantly told Simone I wanted him. And the rest was history, like. You feel like the stars aligned? Oh yeah, yes sir. Many of these litters customers came back to us for new puppies and they bring their friends and uh, for us means a lot because uh, uh, we feel they appreciate our dog, they appreciate our work. As a dog breeder I tend to meet a lot of people. One of them is my friend Mike Mongo from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Mike has a mail from the M litter. The M litter was uh, 10 puppies and um, one female is in our kennel, one male is in Romania, one uh, puppy is in Lebanon, um, one is in Trinidad and Tobago, and six puppies went to the States. Um, one of these puppies from the States is Akbar Force Mag, but we call him Batman because he was the darker puppy in the litter. here in Rabbit Hill Park in Decula, Georgia. This spot right here is significant because this was the first spot when Mac was probably like four and a half months old. When I got him here from Romania, that I did his first photo shoot right here in back of these basketball courts. So it's only right that I bring my boy back over here to do this little segment for him and me for the Agba Force documentary. In the beginning, I didn't know what Agba Force was. Um, I was 
heading down to Birmingham, Alabama to go pick up my female Misha from Vaughn Reeves, Rottweilers. And I asked Wayman Reeves if I could film his dogs. He was like, sure, that's no problem. And as I was filming his dogs, he was like, hey, read the export pedigrees. And on the export pedigrees, it was Akba Force all over the export pedigrees. And I didn't know what the heck Akba Force was. I was in the process of getting a dog from Tim Rucker. And after that trip, because he went with me to Wayman Reeves' house um, to get Misha, he was saying that uh, he was thinking about you know, eventually importing from Agua Force Kennel. I said, it seemed like they're doing their thing. You know, he was telling me about it. When Tim had um, lost the litter that I was gonna get a male from, I was had first pick male, he was still deciding whether he was gonna get Major or Mac. At the time, they, they were just numbers. They just was going off their, uh, their um, chip numbers. And um, I asked him, I said, hey, is that black puppy still available? He was like, yeah, the black puppy's still available. And I immediately met with Simona, and that was the first time that her and I talked. And you know, she was very pleasant, um, very professional. She answered all of my questions, made me feel comfortable. And because other people had already imported from her, Sean Wayman and um, Cornelius Jackson, I felt comfortable to send my money. I didn't think twice about it. You know, I knew that I was going to get the dog. I just wanted to make sure that I was getting him. <laughs> that was one thing I was concerned about. You know, when I, when I laid eyes on him, he reminded me so much of a dog in the 90s named Prince. And I said, yo, he has to be mine. You know, he's everything that I was, I was looking for. You know, he was he was special to me. I knew immediately. There was no ifs, ands, buts about it. And I didn't care what anybody said. Simona and I really started building a, a good business relationship, a good working relationship. And she tells me, you know, I just, I ran my mouth a lot. You know, I was always talking and, you know, uh, asking questions and she was asking questions and that's what kind of, you know, built our bond. And the more that we got to learn about each other and the more she taught me about Rottweilers and things that was going on, I started throwing ideas to her, she started throwing ideas to me. And you know, it just, it was, it was just like something destined to happen. As time went on, we continued just to, to, you know, build a stronger bond and build trust. That's the most important thing. You know, you can't have a, um, a working business relationship, especially when the two people are in the same place without trust. And that was the first thing that we established between uh, her, myself, and Colin. Um, because I would say like close to a year into our working relationship, after we did projects together, marketing campaigns, whatever for the dogs, um, I asked if, if it was cool if I was over the Aqua Force page because I was communicating with so many people who had imported dogs from right into the States. You know, I was kind of like the middleman. And um, she was like, cool, you know? and. That's just a testament to how much trust that her and Colin both had in me to be over their business page. You know, a guy who they never met. And, you know, essentially, you know, we just met online and we talked every day, but they really know me from, from jump, but they put a lot of trust in me and I trust in them. And that was kind of how it, how it started because it took a shift from there. And I just was like, all right, now we're gonna go full steam, diving into the analytics of the page and seeing where a lot of the, the, the high traffic was coming from and we're gonna hone in on it. And they put complete trust and faith in me to let me go ahead and spearhead everything as far as imaging, videos, and all that stuff is concerned with Aqua Force. And um, a lot of people who look at Aqua Force, they know that I'm in the background. They know that like, you know, Mike Mongo's behind them because a lot of the ideas and concepts and stuff that I come up with for them, it has an American feel, from the music to um, the imagery, you know, the videos. It just has an American feel, and it has depth and substance. And um, that was something that I was trying to do with other cameras, but Aqua Force was just the camera that gave me an opportunity, and I appreciate them for that. But they completely trusted in me to, to do whatever I wanted as far as how the dogs were going to be presented, you know? And I keep, you know, using the word trust, but that's probably the most important thing because you know, you can't have anything without trust. And especially if you're friends doing business together, you know, typically that never works. But we all three, we work well together. And it's because we have trust in a, in a, a pretty deep bond between us, you know? Um, and everybody who's online can see it and they can feel our energy, you know? Um, it's something that we didn't plan for. It just kind of happened and all of it fell into place. And um, that's really what it's about. Shortly after that campaign with the death row I did with Akbar Force, 
I um, told Simona, I said, you know, I'm about to come up with these flyers for Batman. So I sent her a few of them. And the one that I sent her that was black and white, she said, uh, it looks like a movie. And I said, it kind of does look like a movie. And I never had an idea to do a documentary or any type of films or anything like that at the time. And um, she had threw out the name, The Most Beautiful. You know, she called him The Most Beautiful. And I said, that's it. I said, you know, just from there, you know, I was like, yo, I have to I have to do something with that. Like, a light bulb went off in my head immediately. And that's where the most beautiful idea came from. You know, just us having a conversation, talking on the phone and exchanging ideas. And typically, that's how a lot of this stuff happens for us. Like, we just be on the phone talking and boom, it just, it just happens. When we put the most beautiful out, I said, it's either gonna be a success or it's gonna be a complete fail. They're gonna love it or they're gonna hate it. People loved it, you know, it got a very good response. Going into the the, um, the spring in the summer, I told her, I said, look, we have to do something with Aqua Force. I said, you know, I'm behind the scenes. I know what you guys do every day. I know your clients. I know um, how you guys communicate. I know your story. I said, there's nobody better to tell the story but me. And she agreed. However, she wasn't willing to do the video. <laughs> Simona doesn't like um, being on camera too much. Um, but, uh, which is surprised. A lot of people probably don't know that. It's photos and stuff that she takes, but just like being on video, but um, I actively kind of wore her and Colin down as far as doing this film, and that's why we're here today. Batman was a was a was an easy nickname to give him because he's so dark, you know. Called him the Dark Knight, call him Batman, and I just kind of ran with it. It was, you know, it's good for marketing, it's good for, you know, doing different designs and stuff like that. But the name Mac, his registered name, Aqua Force Mac. Um, he's named after Prodigy's album Return of the Mac. It's one of my favorite albums. Um, Prodigy, God Rest the Dead, is from the rap group Mob Deep. And, um, you know, I'm an East Coast guy. I love East Coast hip hop. And uh, he's one of my favorite MCs. And uh, he was named after that album. I wouldn't have the success that I have without him. You know, like, him and I make a great team. And I said that at the end of the, the most beautiful documentary, and I really mean that. Um, I could have I could have had another dog, but I don't think that it would be what it is today you know like it just it just falls in a, falls into place and I think that when he starts his um, breeding career it's only gonna continue to grow and elevate and he's gonna follow in Agba Force Samson and Agba Force Waldo's footsteps and um, I think they are the, the, really the heavy hitters here who kind of stamped the Agba Force name here in the states and you know Batman just kind of elevated everything you know brought, bring more awareness to the kennel to my friends Colin and Simona um, I love you both I'm extremely happy for you and all the success that you had, and I wish you nothing but more success in the future. I'm grateful and thankful to be a part of the team, and I'm happy that we're on this journey together because I only see bigger things to come in the future for us, and um, I told you I was going to get you on camera to do this video. In the future, I hope we grow uh more in our bidding program and always we make the best choice in the best way uh, we think to do it not in a easy or in a fast way in a breeding program we never uh, have a moment when uh, we are done with the work there is always something to do or to learn we will continue to do the best for our um, kennel program and to satisfy our customers just being a business venture ended up being lifelong friends and more so family. Thank you, Simona and Kellen of Aquaforce Kill.